There are so many misunderstandings about women and the priesthood. As a religion professor at BYU, one of the misunderstandings I hear the most comes from women who say something like, I don't really have a problem with the priesthood, so why do I need to study it? Well, today we're going to talk about why every woman in the church needs to understand her priesthood power. I'm Barbara Morgan Gardner, and this is my Five Minute Fireside. In the 2019 General Women's Session, President Russell M. Nelson gave a phenomenal talk regarding women in the priesthood. In fact, he said, I entreat you to study prayerfully all the truths you can find about priesthood power. This is an awesome and extremely important invitation from our prophet. But I've noticed that even still, through my experience, that many people really do struggle to understand what the priesthood is. I use the following analogy to help people understand this confusion. It's the parable of the blind men and the elephant. The parable describes six blind men who all touch different parts of an elephant. Each of them was touching one part of the elephant, thinking that they were describing the whole. In reality, however, they had not touched the entire elephant. This is similar to what happens when we talk about women in the priesthood. Some people talking about women will simply say, women do not have the priesthood because they have not been ordained to a priesthood office. But then another person will say, well, of course women have the priesthood. They've been endowed with priesthood power. Some will say that women don't have the priesthood at all. And others will say, well, President Oaks talked about women being set apart and therefore having the power and authority of the priesthood. Like the blind man and the elephant, if we are simply looking at a few pieces, we're going to miss the whole of the priesthood. This is one of the major reasons we have so much confusion. Maybe we can think about it this way. When we talk about the priesthood, we have to understand that there are two definitions of priesthood. Just like there are two definitions of the word priesthood, there are two definitions of the word earth. There's the big earth that we think about, the entire globe. And there's also the earth that we step on, the dirt that we also call earth. What we typically and historically focus on is the second definition of the word priesthood. This is usually in reference to men being ordained to a priesthood office of deacon, teacher, or priest, and with men holding priesthood keys. But priesthood is so much more than that second definition. In fact, priesthood is God's total power. And within this power that God has, there are two priesthood structures that both heavily apply to women. One of these structures is the hierarchical or administrative priesthood structure, and the other is patriarchal, otherwise known as familial priesthood structure. Okay, I know your eyes may have glazed over, but stick with me. We're really about ready to get to the really, really good stuff. The stuff that really matters to women in the church. So when we look at these two organizational structures, we have to see the importance of women in both. In this first structure, the hierarchical or administrative structure, this is the structure where women receive priesthood power and authority because they have been called and set apart by someone who holds priesthood keys. This is what President Oaks was talking about in his talk, Keys and Authority of the Priesthood. This patriarchal or familial priesthood structure, which by the way, President Benson says another term for patriarchal priesthood is family priesthood. This is the priesthood power that will increase the ability of women to be able to be of great influence in the world, in their homes, in their family, and in their personal lives. This is the priesthood that we understand when we study our scriptures and we go to the temple and receive personal revelation. If we wanna learn more about this familial priesthood structure, the best place to learn about it is in the temple. God loves to do his teaching in his holy house. One of the things I love about the temple is how much the Lord teaches in his temple. Often we think we go to the temple and we've learned everything we need to know. I love the story Elder Boy K. Packer tells about an experience he had with President David O. McKay in the temple. He describes how President McKay was sitting among members of the First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve, and in the middle of the meeting, he stood up and gazing seemingly at the sky, said to the members of the First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve, I think I am finally beginning to understand. President McKay was 95 years old, and he had been a member of the church his entire life. I love this story because sometimes we go to the temple and think that we have learned all that we need to learn. But in reality, there is so much that the Lord is trying to teach us. In fact, President Russell M. Nelson said the following, Oh, there is so much more your Father in Heaven wants you to know. 
And specifically, President Nelson is asking the Sisters of the Church to know more about women and their priesthood power. He's asked us to be able to be more influential and have a stronger voice for morality. He's asked us to be a part of bringing in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Look, I know that what President Nelson is asking us to do as women can sometimes be extremely overwhelming and maybe daunting. We may even feel like it's above our ability to accomplish. But these last few years, as I have spoken with students and friends and family, I have recognized how important it is to understand this topic for ourselves. And as we do think and ponder on this topic, God really does make His will known to us. God really does teach us through the Spirit what it is that we need to know. In my personal study, I have learned so much from the Lord. And I know that as we continue to study this topic together as sisters, we really will be more influential. We have a world that needs women to really be a strong moral force. As women and disciples of Jesus Christ, don't we want to have more power for good? Don't we want to be more influential? Don't we want to be instruments in God's hands in order to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of mankind? Sisters, the priesthood power that God has is the answer to these things. President Nelson has asked us as women in this church to understand and use the power that God has endowed us with. And if we don't do it, as covenant making and keeping women, who will? So let's take this challenge and let's run with it. Let's become a generation of women who know, understand, and use God's power, His priesthood power. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Barbara Morgan Gardner, and this has been my five-minute fireside.